Today, we talk about themed bases. Not So Average Builder is sponsored by USAGundamStore.com, bringing the hobby to your front door. Use promo code NOTSOAVERAGE and get 10% off your next order. Hey guys, Tom here, and this is Not So Average Builder. And have you ever had a miniature that you just don't want to do a plain old base for? You want to do something a little different? Well, in this video, I show you the tips and techniques that I've learned over the last six months on how to do just that. Using all the stuff that we've learned in the previous videos where you uh, dry brush, wet blending, regular painting, all of those things, I will show you how to do that. And in this particular, we're going to use the Noise Marine with a themed base. Now there's tons of themed bases you can buy online, they're resin, and those are awesome bases. I'm not, you know, discrediting those at all. But for those of you like myself, who want to just kind of be a little different every once in a while, and make something that's very unique, that's what we're going to do. It may not look the greatest, but the point is, is that you tried. Now to the fun stuff. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, what are you doing? please consider subscribing. If you have any questions about this, drop a comment down below. Let's talk about Patreon for a minute. Some awesome individuals. We have Fiddlesworth Frank and Chris D for continuously supporting this channel. If you would like to help support the channel, go to patreon.com forward slash not so average builder. And that's right down there. There's also a link in the description below. Any money donated to Patreon goes directly back into the channel to help buy new things, buy new techniques, stuff like that. It benefits the channel greatly. And any amount that you give is a blessing. So I would greatly thank you and appreciate it. Well, without further ado, let's jump right into these bases. All right, so we're gonna take this ordinary looking base. I think it's a 28 millimeter. And we're gonna make it fit something that would be perhaps good enough for the noise marine. So how are we gonna do that? And what are we gonna use? Well. You're going to need this. Most importantly, you'll need this. Don't worry about the brand. You'll need super glue. It has to be super glue. We're going to use this. This is cork from Hobby Lobby. I think it's quarter inch. I'm terrible at measurements, so don't uh, don't quote don't ever quote my measurements. <laughs> They're probably wrong. And we're going to use some plow plate. Now everybody thinks of plow plate as something for Gundams, but it is a universal thing that goes on everything. So what we're going to do first, and what this can be used for, it can be used for rocks, it can be used for all sorts of things. But what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to make like a base for a dance floor. So what I'm going to do, so we're going to take our base, I'm going to take a little piece of this I'm going to take my hobby knife I'm gonna go a little past all right so cut around the cork around your base and you're going to kind of roughly mimic the shape of the base itself and I've glued it here and now we're gonna kind of tilt your blade at an angle and contour the cork to match the base even more now don't throw your extra pieces away because like in this example, I wanted to use the platform that the, space, the noise marine is going to sit on to be a little higher and nothing better than your scraps. So kind of match those up where you want to go. Uh, and I actually had created a little bump out accidentally and it, uh, it looks terrible, but you can make it work to your advantage. So on this one, I'm going to just move the cork pieces, the extra cork pieces towards the back and kind of cover that up. Now you're going to take your plot plate and I just used the template of a base, another base that I had and drew out a circle. Cut that circle out and we'll match it up to the raised area in a second. And all you do on this is you find out where it is and you kind of notch out that piece so that it matches the raised area because I don't want it to hang over too much. It doesn't have to be perfect after all this is chaos, just kind of go with the flow. And then you're going to mark out, or at least in this case, I marked out my grid lines where I wanted my quote-unquote dance floor to be. 
Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be whatever you need it to be. I'm not going to make these absolutely square. I just cut them out, give a little extra room in between, and just stick them on your base. And there's little extra pieces of cork that I've got laying all over my mat. And I'm going to turn these into little rocks. Kind of make it look like when the dance floor appeared that it kind of shoved some rocks out of the way. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're making awesome custom bases. Now I'm taking Vallejo ground texture. This is just the gray stuff. I had it lying around. And we're going to take some rocks. Again, these are things that I had lying around. You don't have to use rocks that you get from a hobby store. You can go out in your garden, in your yard, pick up rocks, dry them out, and use them on here. No big deal. You can even use cork pieces. But I'm just going to press them into the, the pumice material, which kind of acts as really good as a glue, and just kind of shove that in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Little exposed areas of the pumice are just fine. Now you can see your handiwork. I did put some little extra pieces on the back to kind of give it that extra look that it's shot out of there. Now I've already primed this. I didn't show this. But the first thing we're going to do is paint in your uh, dance floor details. And I used two of the colors that I've already used previously on other parts of the model. I did end up throwing in an extra orange in there, which I don't recommend to do, especially if you're going to do like a tournament paint or anything like that just because you want to use the same colors or similar colors that you've already used on the kit previously. I could have used the Turbo Dork paints, but I think I just wanted to go with some opaque looking ones just to kind of make it look better or look more disco-y, I don't know. I really don't know, I was just kind of going with the flow. But you're going to paint those in uh, two to three thin coats, never ever go on raw unless you're going on to the, the ground texture in this case. I'm just putting it in there, not thinned, just pressing it in. Use bigger brushes than what you need in those big surface areas. It just helps out. It covers, covers more ground with less brush strokes. And then when you get closer into the tinier details or closer to your painted details already, that's when you need to uh, kind of use a smaller brush. But the bigger the brush, the better. More surface area per stripe, for swipe and not have to worry about brush strokes as much. On the ground texture, it's not as big a deal. Now you will need to make sure that you get in between the floor tiles. We're gonna end up washing this, so it's not as pertinent to get everything covered. And here you see I'm using the Army Painter, I'm using Strong Tone and Dark Tone. And we're just gonna cover everything. I wasn't going to hit the tiles to begin with, but I end up doing that just because I wanna have that uniformity. But just go through and hit all your, your ground texture, everything that you did. Uh, going between the tiles and then like I said I ended up covering everything but you don't have to do that if you wanted more of a clean look you could just leave those plain as they were but I kind of wanted that rough texture because again it's chaos it's not all clean it's got to be raw so now we're going to break out the dry brush and all I'm doing here is using the same exact colors that I had for those specific uh, tiles and just hitting them over there with the dry brush to kind of clean them up a little bit get the edges kind of more crisp and take out some of the waviness as far as the ground goes I just used the same brown and just kind of lightly dry brushed over top of it I think I might have used a red brown I'm not sure and then here in a second I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of lighter and I'm pretty sure that I used Ushati bone just a very very light pressure hitting just the, the details on the rocks and some of the higher edge details. And I even use that on the dance floor to kind of give it a, a dirty texture as well. Again, this is not something you have to do. You can kind of, if you like it, this is what, these are the steps that I did and it'll kind of give you a little hint. Now comes time to facing the figure. So you're gonna snap it off. And what I use is that little point that's created when you snap off metal to kind of create an indent in the base where I want it. So I know where to drill and it creates like a pre-drill hole so I don't have to worry about it slipping around and damaging the paint. And super glue is your best friend on this. You're always going to use it. Stick a little dab on the end, stick it through, and what that's going to do is lock that in place so it doesn't move. In hindsight, I probably should have used some glue on the other foot. I didn't. Oh well. I'm not that worried about it. I did end up putting a dab of super glue on the bottom of the base where the pin sticks through to kind of help solidify that lock in 
But here you see, it's pretty much done. It just needs a final matte coat. I'll throw you some extra pictures. It is really that simple to do a theme base, guys. Don't stress about it. If you have any questions about this, drop a comment down below. Remember, don't just be an average builder. Be a not-so-average one. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.